they, they just started playing hard. No lay-in rule. You know, Shaq got a foul early in the game, but was able to play foul, foul free the rest of the way. And they did a good job. And right here, Shaq just guarding everybody, stopping the penetration by the point guard, stripping Vlade, and they completely lost their poise because of the defensive intensity. Well, and that has to happen. Now, the, the Lakers definitely have to get themselves defensively going, particularly when they're not doing the things they're supposed to do, as you can see now, looking at the defensive statistics that you have here. But, you know, sometimes I think Vladi forgets that he is faking and thinks that he is sincerely <laughs> being fouled. Sometimes I do. I, I really think he forgets that he is faking those fouls. And then it humiliates the officials because the crowd doesn't know he's faking. Right, right. And they get angry get about it. Let me ask you guys about a uh, good point that was brought up in, in the studio about the poise of the team. Magic Johnson, of course, and we were looking, nodding at each other about how you, you argue with the refs, complain about the refs. He said, just be quiet, play basketball. And that, that's, a, that's a good point about what the Kings need to do. Well, I agree with Magic and what he said. You know, there's difference, though. You know, Shaq was complaining early on, but he plays. There's a lot of guys that can play. I mean, Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar complained as much as anybody. With me and Kevin McHale, I'm not saying that. But, you know, there's a difference between complaining and going out and doing your job. Well, I never complained, did I? Can you believe this? You Magic <laughs> Johnson complained you, as much as everybody but Danny. <laughs> Danny, you came into the league complaining. But the point is, both of them played through it. And that was That's Magic's right. point right. that is important. You can't get distracted by it. Yeah, Danny, you complained when you went to the scoring table. So uh, <laughs> Let's take a look at tonight's box score. Off the bench. <laughs> O'Neal and Fisher, 13 and 11, double figures for the Lakers and balanced scoring for the Kings. But, hey, Kobe Bryant, 3 for 12. Do you think that's going to continue? I don't think it's going to continue. I think Doug Christie's done a good job, though. He has made Kobe Bryant earn him. And whenever they run a pick and roll, they switch, and they're not giving him any room. The forwards are actually helping on any penetration, which we haven't seen in the past. All right, right now let's get the report from Craig Sager. Well, Rick Edelman's comments to his team, leave the physical part of the game alone. Use your energy to play good defense. Forget about the officials. Stop complaining. You guys have a lot of energy. You have made a lot of good plays, but the lead has evaporated. Also, Chris Weber got a message that he is open. He is able to do whatever he wants against Mark Madsen. They said when you get the ball, look in, quote, your wheelhouse, you can score easily against him. Be more aggressive. Here come your team. Kobe Bryant against uh, the various defenders on him uh, started with uh, Christie and then Jackson and Bibby and uh, Kobe's got a feel he was tied up pretty well. Huh? He was and you know again like I said when they would go out and run screen and rolls with Kobe nowadays Kobe has earned so much respect in this league because of his offense. It didn't used to be last year in their three championship years where they hardly ever trap him coming off screen and rolls because of the respect they have to Shaq. Well, that's why the other Laker players are very significant. Kobe is going to break loose in this game and every other game. But what has to happen is guys like Fisher, guys like uh, Fox, they have to break loose to prevent some of the help in the collapsing defenses. You're right. Fox was over four in the first half. Here is Shaquille O'Neal deflected away by Devots after Weber picked up where he left off, scoring the first points for the Kings to start the second half. And Fox gets a hand on the ball from Bibby, knocks it out of bounds. Last touch by the Lakers with 14 on the clock. Good move right there by Mike Bibby beating Fox, but a good recovery by Fox getting him from behind. And one of the things I think has to happen is what Craig Seger was saying that Rick Adelman was saying to him, they've got to continue to push the ball to keep the Lakers' legs moving. I'll tell you who's moving now, and that's Chris Weber has 12 points. He scored the last basket on the follow at the end of the first half and the first two to start the third and a minute in it's a seven point king lead. This is five on four. Look at nobody's guarding Madsen. Well someone is now. <laughs> well when he gets a at the lay in it's amazing. That's because he's guarding himself. Kobe Bryant missing a three but Madsen gets an offensive rebound. I'll tell you he has the looking for the shot. He set a screen with the ball and there's nobody to come up to help. Well, he's giving them the intangible, but other people have to chip in. <laughs> Shaq. Not this time, and Weber getting the rebound. Weber playing big for the Kings, who are looking to even the season series with the uh, Lakers here at Arco. They wanted uh, Staples as uh, Derek Fisher makes a good play and then uh, cancels it out with a pass out of bounds. 
There's two open court opportunities that Kobe's had with just the bad quarterbacking. We see Vlade, he's only guarding Madsen as he comes to the glass and gets inside the dotted line. They do not want to guard him. And you know, at the other end right here, Weber, he's being played by Madsen on an island all by himself down there. Stoyakovic comes up empty on the three, so the Lakers have it with uh, the same five that started the game. Derek Fisher and Kobe Bryant at guard, and up front, Rick Fox, Madsen, and Shaquille O'Neal, and a good anticipation on the steal by Christie, one of the best in the league. Well, it's getting extremely physical between the flopping and Madsen bumping. It's very physical in the middle out there. And of course, Fox knows what that's like early in preseason. Getting into trouble. Uh, good pass from Fox into Shaquille O'Neal, who has 15 points. In case you joined us late, Shaquille O'Neal went over the 20,000 point mark in the latter stages of the second quarter, 28th to do so in league history. Off the screen, Major Stoyakovich, and here's Kobe Bryant. We have not seen the Lakers run the fast break tonight. I think that's where they miss a guy right there, like Scott Pollard. They just come off and shoot a 20-foot shot. Now one person is inside the paint and made any effort to get to the offensive boards for the Lakers. And Matson lost the composure for the second because Christie tied him up, didn't know what to do, and he just bounced it out of bounds. Well, because they're leaving him completely open, and the psychological factor enters into this also because the crowd is yelling to him to shoot. He's not even looking for a basket or set a screen with the basketball. Nobody would switch on the shooter, and he'd be and that shooter would be wide open. Bibby was wide open, getting the screen from Devons, but comes up empty. So both teams a little dry here in the first few minutes of the third. Here is Kobe Bryant, it drops in for him. Fourth basket for Kobe, and it's a three-point lead. And it's gonna be tough on Kobe and Shaq because of Madsen's presence out there. They're playing five on four on offense, and you know, coach, ask me to answer me this question. How do you play against and not be guarded by anybody and have five turnovers? <laughs> and get paid for it. <laughs> Madsen, talk about a turnover, picks one up there. Well, and that's what he does well, Dick, get that in. He does an awful lot of helping out, but they definitely pay a price for it down at the other end. Kobe's still trying to find the mark, and he is struggling tonight. And here is Bibby driving in and fires behind to Christie. Was not behind the three-point line, but Bibby is, and he gets it. Mike Bibby, who had missed his last five shots, coming up with another three and has nine points, second to Chris Weber's 12 for Sacramento. I still think Sacramento, they were able to be stopped in the second quarter because they're making one or two passes and trying to shot. They're trying to score off a transition. They're trying to do it too easy. Madsen coming back, and it's again four-point game. Lakers staying in there despite the fact that we have not had any mini explosions yet from Kobe Bryant. Well, it's glad to see Madsen take that shot. You can't believe that a guy reaches a professional level and has no shots being that open that close to the basket. And Bibby with a turnaround gets a basket. And Mike Bibby now with 11 points. And when last year's Western Final was history, everyone was saying Bibby might have been the best player on the floor. Very few arguments there. Christie on the block. Fox gets it back. Nine on the clock. Bryant going in. Blocked by Devots. Bryant again with five on the clock. Not to be denied is Kobe three, Bryant. Three, three, three times he went after it. See, the plays were made well to stop it. Their points. 31 years and 14 days trailing those notables. And here was the shot that put him over the top. Pretty good company right there. Knights of the round table. <laughs> <laughs> you have to definitely ask for an invitation to sit back at that table. That's a lot of points. And you know who's going who's gonna to get beat all of them? Kobe. Now you probably are right. Weber going in and uh, is fouled. And uh, Kobe Bryant, a good bet, uh, Danny. And he's the youngest in history to uh, reach 10,000. Mark gets more playing time. It doesn't matter if he's not as bad. I remember when they had A.C. Green, they did the same thing. They did the same thing against the Maki Walkers. They do against Mark Madsen. So... How about Matson getting position and knocking Devots, and uh, unless that was another flopperoo, and it's a four-point Sacramento lead. Well, you can't make the distinction because he does it so frequently. If Devots timed some of his flopping, the officials wouldn't be offended by his actions. Weber with a turnaround. You can get flop sweat if it's warm enough in here, <laughs> especially if you're Monty Devots. So Fox controls. We have under five minutes to play in the third quarter. 
Nick Stockton along with Danny Ames, John Thompson, Craig Sager with you at Arco Arena. Meeting number three of the year, and they expect that they'll see each other again in postseason. Kings and Lakers. And four on the shot clock. Here's the duel. Christie with Kobe Bryant getting the basket and then log lobbing up court. Kobe now with 14 to go along with 10 boards. And that's great defense. It's an individual and uh, spectacular offensive play right there. Good defense by Madsen again. Weber and Devon fighting for the loose ball, and Matson puts his hand in and knocks it away. Well, and you can't underestimate Matt Matson has chased Weber out of the post. Weber is now trying to take him on the drive. But one of the things because Matson's so physical, he's fighting him on the inside, and he is a strong kid. He's not a small kid. Right here, you see Kobe Christie's just making him earn everything. There's nothing you can do. You can't stop the shot and the drive right there, but it makes him take the ball up in a different route to get his shot off. And Matson right here, Vlade trying to flop. He had perfect position on Matson. I don't know what Matson could have done. Uh, there's no way he could score over Vlade. Well, Matson just picked up his fourth personal foul and goes to the bench. And uh, Weber has had the edge, but Madsen has certainly been a uh, big factor for the Lakers to hang in this game. Robert Orley replacing Madsen in the lineup. The ball last touched by the Lakers, and the Kings with plenty of time. Bill Jackson, who earlier in the year said, I don't know if I can uh, reach these guys anymore, but things were going bad for the Lakers, and that's changed. Remember, they were 11 and 19 Christmas Day after losing to these Kings, and they put together a couple of good streaks. They'll be in the playoffs. The question is what position? Be interesting to see if the floor opens up more for Shaquille O'Neal and also for Kobe because Ori has to have someone guarding him. Fox with his first basket of the day, and it's a three. And with three and a half minutes to go, the Lakers have a 59 to 58 lead. So they have made it all the way back from a 15 point deficit. Seven minutes to go in the second quarter. And if you're the Kings, you're saying, hey, is, is this deja vu? I hate how the, Lake, the Kings are playing. I mean, they're just like go to Chris Webber every time. They don't get anybody else involved. Right now they're going to Page yet because maybe Webber's tired. Where the, look at the offensive rebound after nothing. They just rely on the outside shot to either go or not. So and, it, and they sort of forgot how they got a hit, Danny, because they were hit. They got a hit through motion and running and getting the uh, Lakers to move, move their feet a lot more. Now they let them stand around, and that's throwing them in the drive path. And Bibby, and that's a good foul on uh, Fox because Bibby was headed down for a, an easy two. And uh, it is the team foul for the Kings. It is their fifth team foul, so uh, it's only good if uh, Bibby must, misses one of those free throws and uh, looking to end a 7 0 Laker run. It's still a good foul, even if he makes them both, because at least you got to earn them that way going to the free throw line. But, you know, that that's how they got in the game right there, Coach, with turnovers, and they got in transition, they got the transition going off long rebounds. But they haven't been able to get the stops and get out in transition because the Lakers are taking better care of the ball. But still, in their half-court offense, they need more movement. You know, we're, we're used to seeing this Sacramento team with body movement and ball movement, and right now we're seeing a lot of Chris Webber one-on-one. Well, and, and in fact, you need to move the feet of the Lakers, and that's what they did a great job of doing, getting Shaquille to move. Even the half-court sets, when they get movement, you're forcing them to play defense. As a result of it, that slows them down when they're on offense. Well, what a good foul that was, because Bibby did miss both free throws. Kobe Bryant gets his own rebound. The 2.47 to go with an impossible shot. And he is fouled. Those are the three who average in double figures during the regular season anyway. And a uh, Laker foul against Rick Fox will be his third. They're in the penalty, and so Stojakovic will shoot a pair. Well, right here, Pazier works without the ball as good as anybody. And Fox, he's not even thinking about helping. And that's why they're going to allow Ori and... Madsen to defend Weber one-on-one -on -one. and that's why Sacramento gets lulled into that type of basketball because they are not even thinking of leaving Bobby Jackson, Mike Bibby or Peja Stoyakovich to go help on Weber. 
And I think the officials are doing a damn good job because they understand the intensity that's involved here. A lot of flopping, a lot of holding, a lot of physicalness going on. So to prevent a problem, these guys are tightened up. They're calling it the same for both teams. Right. I think it is a good job. I agree with Coach. And, you know, Doug Christie's you know, allowed to hold Kobe and fight and scratch. And I know Vlade's been unhappy with what Shaq's doing, but they're letting him play a physical game. And I agree with Coach. I love the way they're officiating this game. Shaq getting the ball in great position, but it rolls off. Two-point lead for Sacramento. Christie, Weber, Weber has room. Fight for the loose ball. Lakers wanted it, and Derek Fisher diving and keeps it into the Laker hands. I always thought Derek Fisher should be a strong safety. Maybe an, <laughs> maybe an outside linebacker with that body. The Kings are relying so much on the outside game. Ori driving in for his first basket of the game to tie it at 64. So much for the defensive stance we were talking about with Seabath. Well, yeah, and that's not Mark Madsen. Uh, Ori is more offensively minded. I think Mark Madsen can become more effective if he looks to try to score and looks to become more offensively aggressive. Kings look a little impatient offensively the last couple of times down. Under a minute to go. What a looping alley-oop over the head. O'Neal to Kobe, and that gets Madsen off the bench. What is that song? He's busting loose. He's busting loose now. You better defend him. And that was a hell of a pass by Shaquille O'Neal. Yes, it was. Holy cow, that's an understatement. i tell you what. What about the finish? I mean, just to catch and know where you are at the basket. How about the finish of this third quarter and the Lakers turning it on wide open? Derek Fisher front rims it, but gets the rebound. Derek Fisher sparking the Lakers here to a lead with a half a minute to go here in the third quarter. Well, look at this pass by Shaq. He just slips it up there, but look at Kobe. He knows exactly where he is, catches it on the inside part of the rim. They don't have to guard Shaq out there. What a beautiful pass and finish. See, and, this is, and this is where the Kings have to be very careful because the ghosts of the pass will come back to haunt them. They've got to answer this aggressiveness with the, of the Lakers with aggressiveness in order to beat these guys if playoff time comes. Jackson committed that last foul, and Kobe Bryant, who started the game, one for nine, now has 19 points shooting in the game. And I'll tell you what, the, you know, the Kings have a lot of talent. We're not taking anything away. Lakers know how to win, don't they? Oh, they definitely know how to win, and particularly when the big time gets going and Kobe gets going. And Pollard from Jackson with 2.8 on the clock. And the Lakers lead by two. And there is Pollard with the interception as time runs out. So the Lakers, who were down by eight after one, five, or three at the halftime, and Kobe Bryant leading the charge with a double-double at 19 points, 11 rebounds. The Lakers have come alive and will take a two-point lead into the fourth quarter here at Arco Arena. This is what a home court advantage is supposed to be about. But tell that to uh, the Lakers, who won game one and game seven last year in the Western Finals, won a game earlier. They know how to win these games, and they're up by two. Start of uh, 12 minute crunch time, Danny and John. It's always an important few, the first few minutes when he always will rest. Phil Jackson will always rest Shaq in the first part of the fourth quarter. And this is critical. This is where Kobe usually takes over. And now Doug Christie's resting in Jimmy Jackson, not near as good a one on one defender. And here's who on, on the court, both Jacksons, uh, Bobby and Jim Jackson, Stoyakovic, Keon Clark and Weber. Devin George has checked in with Samaki Walker, with Ori, Bryant, and Fisher. Ryan making the free throw. He has 20 points right now, leading the Lakers scores. Shaq on the bench with 19, John. But when you look at both of those lineups, you see that both coaches put hustle guys in the game. They have two, two groups of uh, guys where you are expecting the energy from. When you start looking at guys like Clark and Jackson, they've got to go, they've got to go, both Jacksons, in fact. But now also, when you look at the Lakers, the last thing Phil said to them is that we have our hustle team in. We, you, I want the defense. And that's what Devin George is trying to do with Stoyakovich, and he cannot avoid fouling him. That is two on uh, Devin George. And it's in a shooting situation for Paige Assists on the season per game, and he has one in this one. 
Kobe Bryant front rims and Weber gets the rebound as the Lakers leading by one opening minute of the fourth quarter. Dick Stockton, John Thompson, Danny Ainge, Greg Sager, Kings Lakers. No rivalry more intense in the league than this one. Weber working his way around Walker has 18 and the Kings regain the lead. Well, it's one of the first times that Chris has gone to his power game as opposed to being outside trying to penetrate and trying to use the net. But he tried to do that on Mark Matson and he couldn't gain any ground. Corey in the triangle, bouncing it to George. George smartly setting it up again with five on the shot clock. Devin George with a wild attempt from outside. Well, that's two wild attempts by Devin George. They were running the play for Kobe the first time he fell away. And that's what he don't want to shoot. Shots allow Sacramento to get in their transition game. Kobe Bryant coming back, getting his own rebound. It's another offensive blast on his own miss, and this time is fouled. So Pager hits the three, and Kobe gets fouled at the other end. And the personal foul called on Keon Clark. Well, again, they're leaving their guy. Head could have complained about it, but he went aggressively after the rebound and continued to compete. And that's how you win championships. Setting the model and also that guy on the bench as well. It is 73-71 Sacramento. Beja Stoyakovic leading the Kings with 19. He was the high scorer in both earlier games against the Lakers. And a nifty reverse lay-in by Bobby Jackson. And the Kings up by four. Still a lot of time. And again, horrible defense by Samaki Walker right there. You know why Mark Madsen has beat him out just on the last two defensive possessions. And the foul will be against the Kings, who are beside themselves with the Jim Jackson will get called for his second, and it's the third team foul. The Lakers push this down to the baseline. Fisher does his job, but there's no help. Walker way late getting there to help on the baseline drive. That's how the Lakers have always defended the pick and roll. And the Maloof uh, brothers uh, enjoying as they did in Houston when they owned that ball club. Enjoying the Kings to a great degree. And there's Kobe Bryant. No one even remembers the slow start he had in this game. And I think he's feeling good. I mean, I think he, his eyes lit up a little bit when Doug Christie left the game because Doug Christie was making him earn everything. And uh, I think he feels a little more confident with Jimmy defending him. Kobe with 25. Jackson coming back missing. Talking about busting loose, Kobe's knocked the whole damn damn down. <laughs> Kobe had no shot. Great movement in the air, and Walker has the shot blocked by Clark. That's one thing Clark has brought them. He's an off, uh, weak side shot blocker. And it's what the Kings have got to do. They've got to now compete. Jim Jackson with a three. This is where you establish yourself for the playoffs. Now they're going back and forth, head to head, and this is where you trust, where you test the hearts of players. This is a playoff-style game. No question about it. Seven on the shot clock. Jim Jackson guarding Kobe Bryant. A long one. He's got it. Kobe Bryant. And the foul as well. And this could be a four-point play for the Lakers. Talk about coming back and getting a bunch in a hurry. Kobe Bryant hits the three and will go to the line. First the timeout. Well, and it gives Bond and Shaq some more time on the bench because if they don't score and they go up to seven, then Shaq's going to have to hurry back into the game. But Kobe is unreal. That's great defense by Jimmy Jackson. There's nothing else you can do. That's just downright sinful on Kobe's part, what he's doing right now. And when you uh, down, the, down the line, you have to, you know, really... Uh, win the games, they know how to do it. You know, we experienced that last year, and I think that experience is going to help us this year. Experience and poise is also a major factor as uh, Jim Jackson picked up his technical foul after getting all over Bryant, who made the three. So it's the three-point uh, basket. Now we can end up with a five-point play if Kobe Bryant makes the technical 
the free throw and the technical. So now that's the third tee against the Kings. Devots, Bibby, and now Jim Jackson. You know, I don't even care about the tees as much as just how they respond to the tees and how they respond to it. I mean, they get a technical and they go out and they start playing with more physical and more aggressive and with more urgency. That's one thing, but it almost seems like anytime there's adversity, they, they, they melt for a short period of time rather than respond. Oh, it's a very ill-advised technical foul at this time because you don't want the emotions to swing in this game either way, the way these guys are going head to head. And I just think that the Kings still tend to use their emotions in uh, an improper manner to justify how they're playing at times. And our guys in the studios pointed out at halftime, and they could probably... Uh, Day it all over again. Stoyakovich from outside, Shaq getting the rebound. Kobe Bryant has 29 points, 13 rebounds, and uh, they got the five back in a hurry in one possession. So nearly four minutes elapsed here in the fourth. Shaquille O'Neal guarded by Chris Webber with help from Stoyakovich. And it's knocked away by Stoyakovich, it appears. And here's Jim Jackson in a crowd feeding Webber. Nice pass by Jackson. Great pass by Jimmy Jackson right there. And Jimmy Jackson just hit a three, the possession, two possessions before that. He can score and he knows how to play the offense. After Phil Jackson called a, a timeout, not happy with the Lakers defense, and the jumper hit by Devin George ties the game. Well, he needs to hit that shot because he's the man now, not matching that his guy's floating black, clogging up the middle. So he's got to be aggressive, particularly when he has that shot. Kobe had scored the last 14 points before Devin George hit the jumper, and Weber comes right back. He's got 22. That's a tough shot to stop right there. He just shoots that. Or he did a good job, had good position on him. And uh, when Weber's making that jump hook, he's difficult on the Well, you've got to wonder why he doesn't go in there and try to take that shot more. Because Chris Weber's got almost every kind of shot you can imagine. But he doesn't mix his inside game up enough, in my opinion. Bobby Jackson turns it up, up court. And Kareem Rush defending him. Rush played well in the few minutes he was in there. And Devin George deflected the ball away from Keon Clark. So another good defensive play here. Is Kobe Bryant. Oh, what a move. We have seen Kobe Bryant. Now, he didn't score on the two plays, but I'll tell you what, they're highlights anyway. Weber, get the stance, boy. Oh, that deep. Well, Jim Jackson picking up his fourth foul, but the Kings are already in the penalty with 6.39 to go in the fourth. Lakers with only one team foul. So that puts uh, Sacramento at a big disadvantage here as Bryant hits the first free throw. And this is what we talked about, too, the dilemma that Rick Adelman has. He's got Mike Bibby, Doug Christie still on the bench. Lotte Debot still on the bench. He's got a lot of depth, and it's good. But, you know, the Lakers, they got their guys back in the game. And uh, sometimes you can play too many guys. 31 for Kobe Bryant. Bobby Jackson defended by Rush. And Jim Jackson getting away from Bryant. Bangs into Ori. And the lay-in by Keon Clark with his first points of this game. And a spectacular pass by Jimmy Jackson right there. But Kobe, bad defense off at the other end as well. Went for the steal. Here's Shaq, who's been quiet offensively for quite a while. Here's Devin George. The three doesn't go, but Ori gets the offensive rebound. I think he was trying to loop it into Shaq, and he does effectively. Just throw it in there anywhere. Well, that's the old Shaq. I mean, he came, he came in, he got good lift that time in going up because there weren't as many guys hanging on him, probably only one or two, not usually the usual four or five. Oh, there was guys hanging on him, but unfortunately it was Inspector Gadget with skinny arms. That the guy we met here before the game. <laughs> Pinks, I don't even know who you're talking about. Pinks firing in the corner to Jackson. And Jim Jackson hitting a three. He's got nine points, and the King's up by three. Yeah, he's, made, he's their offensive machine so far in this fourth quarter, not just scoring, but two beautiful assists going to the hole as well. Boy, what terrific depth, as John pointed out early. Well, it was both teams, because both teams had three guys in that didn't start the ball game right now. How about Kareem Rush and how heady he has played? Talk about poise for a rookie in a pressure game. Well, but I think he's uh, very offensively conscious. And they're going to need, particularly later on, for a kid like that to be able to come in and stick some shots in. And Kobe Bryant tried to get it through and picked up the ball. But again, look at the second and third efforts. Young kids you need to realize that he doesn't pause when he makes a mistake. He continues to play. 
Seven on the clock. And there is the offensive rebound, Shaq, and the foul. So Kobe fired away from uh, near out of bounds in the corner, and Shaq got the ball and got fouled. That's going to be, that's a tough combination to have to overcome in any playoff series, I think. No, absolutely. But right here, Bobby Jackson does a good job of penetrating and very unselfishly gives the ball to Jimmy Jackson. That's why he's out there to get him some points. And he's made Kobe work hard for his shots. But down at the other end, you know, Shaq, he goes right at Clark. And Clark, you know, he only weighs about a buck 25 trying to play the center position down there. Shaquille O'Neal, 7 of 9 from the free throw line tonight. And the Lakers, who have had a terrific season rebounding, has done it against the Kings in all three games this season. And they continue it with a double-digit lead off the boards once again. Remember, these teams beat one more time on April the 10th at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Well, and, and Shaq has a lot to do with the differentiation between the rebounds, whether he gets them or not, because he commands so much attention in so many situations. I mean, when you look at it, the Lakers have 20 offensive rebounds. What is this, 20 offensive rebounds? Yeah, 20 to 9. To nine. Pretty good. I mean, this is unbelievable, but Shaq requires so much attention, it makes it very easy for the other players to come in and get offensive rebounds. Shaq is 9 for 11, 21 for 26 in the last two games, but Mike Bibby comes right back. He has 13 points, and with less than four and a half minutes to play in regulation, it is a one-point Kings lead. So a seesaw affair down the stretch, and there is Divac trying to gamble against Shaq, and you know the result of that. Well, Bibby right here is limping. He is not 100%. He made that basket coming off the screen down the other end, but he's, not, he's feeling it. And Weber fouled inside. Bibby missed the first 27 games with surgery on his right foot. Well, I like to see this in Weber right here. He's going in there, does a good job, just turns his back right there on Fisher. Fisher does a good job of flopping. Anytime he runs into a screen, it's easier than fighting through it. Well, and you see very seldom you see guys set a screen with the ball. They usually set a screen for the ball. And that's a skill that a player like Weber that amazes me because he's so versatile in so many things he can do offensive. But he really depends a lot on his outside game. Jim Jackson uh, going to the bench and how well has he played scoring nine points, including a pair of threes replaced by Doug Christie and Shaquille O'Neal, who picked up the last foul, has only two. So four minutes remain in the fourth, and the Kings up 91-90. to Both teams have their starting teams in, except for the Lakers with Ori, because Mark Madsen probably will clog up the middle a lot more now. Shaq. Ori crashing the boards, but it comes back down to the Kings. Well, this really is the starting lineup for the Lakers. They just try to conserve Ori's energy defending Weber, and uh, he's there, always been their finisher. There is Divac. Good ball movement by Sacramento, and they've got a three-point lead. And that's where Vladi is very effective. If he's hitting that shot, definitely he's very capable of hurting him because Shaq's not going to come out after. Three-point attempt by Fisher, and the Kings... As we get close to three minutes to go, leading by three, and the crowd rises in unison. And Ori coming in the foul. That'll be the third team foul against the Lakers. Bibby gets fouled. But well, the interesting thing about that, and coming down the court, everybody thinks the point guard calls the play, but Vladi actually went over to Bibby and told him what to call, and then went to the opposite side so that he could work with Weber. Stoyakovic with a fall away. All of a sudden, the Kings by five. Big shot right there by Stoyakovic. Good defense by Fox. There's not a whole lot you can do with a 6'9 guy fading away. Major with 21. Fox blocked by Divac. And this crowd has helped turn this momentum over to the Kings' side in a timeout. And this crowd is a fever pit. Inside, not very many jump shots. A lot of missed jump shots on the outside, but much more in the paint tonight. 
But again, I think that they've done a pretty good job of defending Weber, making him take a lot of shots to get his point. Well, if this did go back to going inside, then he's absolutely correct. And he became more effective once he started to go down on the block because nobody can pass the ball any better than him probably than Lottie. And both of those guys are extremely good passers when they attract defense. Mm -hmm. They open up their offense for the perimeter people. Weber has eight of his 24 points here in the fourth quarter. But I still think Vladi Divac's, Vladi Divac's leadership has helped him more than anything. No he came down the court, blocked shots. He came down the court and, and, and gave the plays. And, and, and Frank Johnson from Phoenix said that last week to us, that he pulls this team together as well as anybody does. And the pick and roll pass off Shaquille O'Neal. And you're right, we just heard Vladi Divac in the last sound thing we heard talk about the experience of the Lakers that well he brings that to the king absolutely and now he's using it too because he's holding his team together and giving a lot of instruction out there Weber hits a big jumper Weber with 26 points 10 in the fourth quarter and it's a seven point Kings lead and this is where the Stars have to step up and lead their team in the fourth quarter right now. They're shooting 70% in the fourth quarter, and uh, the Lakers are playing pretty good defense. Christie doing a great job, and goaltending called against Weber, and credit the basket to Kobe Bryant, who has 33. Right here, Kobe, they're running a two-man game, and you see they're bringing four people over to defend Kobe and Shaft right through his hands. But right here, Weber, that's tough. When you got a guy that can score in the block and step out and knock down those mid-range jump shots, when he has that outside game going, it's very difficult. And Bibby coming off the screen of Divas. So Weber and then Bibby hit big shots for the Kings to open up a seven-point lead again. Just like the playoffs last year, those two guys in a two-man game were unguardable until the game seven the fourth quarter here in Arco Arena. Another big perimeter shot by Mike Bibby. That's what Phil Jackson told me this morning. The two guys that he feared as much as anyway, Mike, Mike Bibby and Bobby Jackson for their mental toughness and making big shots and their lack of fear. Well, the thing that they're doing that's extremely good is that they're answering fire with fire. And Sacramento cannot afford to fold right now because psychologically it's going to mean an awful lot to them later on. Dick. Now, if they, if they were to fold now, that would be really damaging to them. Really mentally damaging. But it doesn't look like they're about to do it. Kobe misses the free throw. Someone ought to tell the Maloof boys this crowd can't yell any louder than this. <laughs> but he can try. Six-point lead. There's the reset. Each team with two full timeouts at the 20. The Lakers still have a foul to give. Here is Weber, picked up by Shaq. Weber going up and foul called before the shot on Robert Ory. But that's the Chris Webber that I like to see. They're attacking Chris Webber. The kid is so versatile and has so much talent that he doesn't utilize this part of his game enough, in my opinion. Going to the basket, being physical on the block, and really adding the aspect to the game of the, of the Kings that they do not have. That was the foul to give, so the next foul against the Lakers will put them into the penalty. Wide open, Chris Webber. And Shaquille O'Neal the rebound. Lakers hang in, trailing by six. Two possession game with nearly 115. And that's the element that Mike Bibby's brought right there, coming down the stretch. They used to just throw the ball to Weber on the block. That time, Bibby runs the pick and roll. But another costly turnover, and Robert Ory is forced to foul for Akinic. Who will go to the line. The line. Particularly if they had lost the game, they would have been really discouraged. I definitely feel that they have a better team as far as depth is concerned, quality depth. Certainly, they don't have two players that are like Shaq or like Kobe, but in this overall, they definitely have a deeper bench, a more quality bench. But do they believe it in their heads? Are they having a party tonight because they think they did something that they should not have done, or do they really believe that they can beat this team? And I think that because of Bibby and Weber in the two-man game and the versatility of Weber and what he's done tonight and what he's done all year up until he had the ankle injury, his game has he's more responsible basketball player than he's ever been in his career. And because of their role player, Stryakovich, who was injured last year in the series, he kind of tanked it down the stretch of Game 7 last year, playing on the hobbled leg. But I believe because they've been there, Christie, Stryakovich, Jimmy Jackson has given a great fourth quarter minutes, Bobby Jackson, they got a lot of options to go to when they shut down.
down Weber and Bibby. And the key is they're healthy now. They weren't healthy all year at a point you made earlier. This team is to be better than last year because of what they have achieved while injured. Well, and that's where I give Rick Adelman a lot of a lot of credit because he's mixed and matched and really got these guys to still maintain a certain level of excellence in missing key players. No basket. No basket. Basket interference called against the Lakers with under a minute remaining and a 10-point Kings lead. And the Kings who had squandered a 15-point lead with seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Lakers led by as many as four. Looked like they had taken the momentum away, but great defense by the Kings. And they did not turn it over in the fourth quarter. Told the story in this game virtually history. Well, it is that, but I'm not, I'm not thoroughly convinced that. <laughs> you know, the big fella gets just a little bit better. Kobe gets a little bit better. They can dominate anybody. You, it's strange to ask them to get better as much as they absolutely do, but I still think that they've got to beat them in the playoffs before they can convince You're right. me. You're right, and uh, you know, Lakers did lead 90 to 89 with just over four minutes left, so they weren't really blown out by any, uh, any measure. And the, the irony of all this is that the Lakers would drop to seventh in the West. And guess who they would play if everything stays the same in the first round? The Sacramento Kings. Oh, yes. What a great series that would be. And, but you know, you got to give, we always talk about the stars stepping up and carrying their team down the stretch. Kobe and Shaq have done all they can do. Uh, you can't ask a whole lot more out of them. But, and Chris Webber's done everything that he could do, especially in the fourth quarter. Brian misses the three. Fisher keeps it alive. But it's a 105 to 93. Too little, too late. The basket will count. With 32 seconds to go, Shaquille O'Neal with home court advantage or all the rest. Well, like Rudy Tomjanovich used to say, never underestimate the heart of a champion. And he did it back to back in Houston, and that's the story. The Sacramento Kings will not have to have anything buzzing in their heads over losing a couple of the Lakers here. They come back and beat L.A. in the fourth quarter, 107 to 99.